And welcome back to the Houston Texans franchise rebuild. Here today, we have another off season, as well as we're gonna be going through year number nine. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I hope you're all having a great day. Please leave a like, comment down below what you thought of today's action, and don't forget to subscribe. Well, last episode, we made the postseason. We went 11 and six, won the division somehow. I believe we got a playoff victory. And now we're trying to again repeat. You know, we've won a Super Bowl a couple episodes ago. And for the Houston Texans, as we're right now basically wrapping up this series, you know, we're trying to get one more, maybe two more at most. Um, but as we're entering now into another offseason in this sim, what do we need to do? Of course, there's a few trades or free agent decisions that we have to be made. But not just even just reloading, but considering, you know, this roster does need some more star talent, I think, to continue to get over this hump here. I think across the board on this offensive side of the ball, you know, we have our weapons that we utilize here. You know, of course, getting depth. Dexter Perry is going to be a decision to be made. There's a part of me that kind of just wants to go with these two young receivers and James Palmer and D'Angelo Washington and, you know, see where that takes us for a season or two. Um, you know, we have an offensive line right now where we have to make some decisions and overall, you know, I think we're going to kind of continue to stay younger here. And I think this might be the last season of Laramie Tunsil on this roster. He's 36 years old. He's still starting caliber, but um, we have we drafted a young lineman a few years ago. I think it was last offseason or a couple offseasons ago and Josh Taylor. I, I think he's just r more ready and deserving of a start. Granted, you know. Uh, Tunsil has been on this roster since year one. Flipping it over now to the defense. I mean, we have our secondary. We have our good group of corners, safeties. We, you know, we got our linebackers. We don't have to do too much here. We don't have to think too much. Um, I think it's continuing to um, either recycle, you know, some of the old thought process, maybe getting another young defensive tackle on this roster. You know, it's continuing to just grow up this roster but as we're entering into now the ninth off season we have 66 million dollars you know as we're basically have two more episodes left we have this one in the finale we have 66 million dollars dexter perry i'm not bringing him back he wants to be back but you know he's a good receiver let's let him test for tunso i'm gonna make the decision at the end Gardner, this is an interesting one. You know, he's 27 years old. You know, for two years, do we just want to finish it out with Gardner? He's a good player. Very good player. Um, I think we have to make a decision on him. Randy Moore, I don't want to really think about punter. So um, I'm going to give him this four-year $10 million. Randy Moore is back. Uh, Mike Moore, we're going to let him go. He was just a free agent flyer. John Dawson here. This is an interesting one because we can afford it. Um, the problem is that he doesn't really play. Um, and with that being said, I'm going to let John test. I'm going to let him go. Let him find something. Same thing here with Troy Agnew. He's a good starting offensive lineman. Let him go to a roster that he can play in. Um, Beckett we brought in here to be a backup. Same here with, thing with Larry Young. You know, these young guys that we drafted, you know, they serve their purposes here. Same thing here with Devon Wooden. Um, Nate Hitchcock, I would like to keep. I just I just don't want to think about it off a backup alignment. So two years, six million dollars. If he stays, he does. So we keep him. And then Devin Bush. I think we're going to reload here at the defensive tackle. Sean Baxter here. I think we're going to get a new backup off-ball linebacker. And Olsen, you know what? He was a fun player to utilize. I had a fun using him for um, the time that I did. Um, but we're going to let a lot of these depth players go. We're going to see where they really land. That's kind of also part of this franchise is seeing where some of these guys go. Now, let's start here with Tunsil. You know, I would like, I would consider definitely keeping Tunsil. You know, he's been on this team for a while, but... I kind of want to lowball him. 
full one year, ten million dollars, and he does resign. So we're going into the offseason with fifty million dollars. Really, the question is, do we want to try to replace the center? Um, not really. Um, and this is a kind of a fair offer. If he takes this, I will keep him. So Devin Gardner, he chooses to resign. So we're going to let everyone else test, and we'll go into the offseason with $44 million to work with. I don't remember if I showed you guys the retirements, but Ezekiel Elliott, he did decide to retire. Let's go see if we have anyone. So we have Adoree Jackson, who retired. He played on the roster for a few years. Didn't help us win a championship, but he was important. We have Jalen Ramsey, Alenzo Carter, who did play on the team for a couple years as well. Baker Mayfield decided to retire. There's actually a lot of big name players that are now. Rashad Evans, who played an important role on our defense. So there's a lot of impactful players here. So hopefully the league kind of gets a little change, Tyler. Higby retires. Those are some of our highlighted players that were on our team that played at least significant, either significant snaps or important, like Tim Settle here, who was a quality, quality backup defensive tackle. So in the current structure of this roster right now, this is what it looks like. So we obviously could consider finding a future backup quarterback, but I mean, Mason Pryor, he's not going anywhere. You know, Roman Oliver here, entering into year four, 26 years old, could look to bring in another backup. That's something that we'll look into in free agency, but um, I don't know how much. Wide receiver probably is something else that we should be considering. Um, but we do have two young guys that I really like. Um, I think our offensive line is very much set, um, even in terms of the backups. I don't think that we really have to be focusing on that at all. Um, you know, we're now going to let Ryan uh, Paul here, second year tackle, take over. So, you know, I think the offensive line is set. I think the offense is relatively set. It's just kind of getting some quality depth players. Defensively, though, there's a little bit more of change. You know, defensive tackles definitely probably have now become a weak spot. You know, that backup safety is always important, especially now with Jalen Petrie entering into the last year of his deal. Do we keep Petrie? I mean, we're probably going to keep him, but, you know, does he... I don't know if he will retire. You know, you never know. I have no idea. Um, but defensively, it's mostly... Continuing just to get some star talent on this roster, you know, we don't really have, you know, besides really our two linebackers, our two corners and Petrie, you know, we don't have like that guy on the interior or the on the edge that can go get the quarterback, you know, so maybe we make a move. Who knows? I think it's a lot of this could be us trading away some of our younger players and trying to, you know, get some youth towards this roster, but let's check out free agency here. And here's your class. We're sitting at $44 million, you know, not a ton of moves that I feel like we have to make, you know, highest overall is uh, Terrence Rogers here. He was a good receiver for Denver for uh, a good amount of seasons. We have Caleb Gilmore here, who's a good defensive, more would be a defensive tackle in our scheme. A couple good offensive linemen here. So, I mean, you know, we're, we're not out here trying to... I mean, Aaron Lawrence is out here as a very good, capable quarterback. Um, but, you know, I'm not thinking about bringing in any guys. I mean, we could. Um, running back is definitely on my kind of to-do list. And out of all these backs, really the only one that I would go after is Greg Howard here. He's more of a receiver, but not a pressing, pressing need. Wide receivers, kind of the same thing. You know, we could try to bring back Dexter Perry, but again, not really. Gino Duval is out there. Um, so we could reunite ourselves with him, but I'm not going to do that. Um, I also saw Tyler Milliton. He's out there. Um, as well as this game still continues to make me only be able to target two players here in free agency. Don't know why. No idea. Um, I just assume it's Madden, so, um, I mean, in terms of getting someone that's like an impactful starter, it would be Caleb Gilmore, um, put him next to, um, David Elliott and kind of let them go to work. Um, that would probably be the only move that could potentially set us over the edge. 
um if i'm just looking across like not getting another corner wouldn't do that for us um so yeah i think we will though go into this um trying to get gilmore here he does want a ton of money though hmm can we really afford to keep gilmore or get gilmore on this roster i don't think we can yeah, no, I think we're going to... Uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to ruin our salary just to get a good defensive tackle on this roster. So, I think we will go after George Howard here. Try to offer him a two-year deal. A bigger two-year deal. Because I kind of like Howard. He's always been a player that I liked in this franchise. Um... He might not love the length of the deal, but at 29, he's not going to get any better. He'll be a solid backup for a few years. And then in terms of like, you know, any other like spot at defensive tackle, you know, John Dawson is out there. I mean, Spencer Steele, he would not be at all a bad option to come in here. He's a speed rusher. He can go get the quarterback. Um, you know, though we do have our front four kind of set. I think in terms of a starter um, or even hell a role player, there isn't much out here besides probably safety just in case if an injury does happen. Um, we could bring back Jabril Peppers. Peppers is not at all a bad option to bring back here. So let's bring back Peppers here. Those will be our two free agent moves. If there's any other moves I do decide to make, I will show you guys. And we did get George Howard on a two year, I think a $13 million contract. He'll be a solid backup player for a couple years to finish out the franchise, help out Damian Pierce as much as possible, trying to help out the offense. Don't know just yet here on Jabril Peppers. Um, I'll evaluate again and we did get Peppers. So now I'm gonna sim and we're going to check out everyone else and maybe make a couple more moves. Um, I, I do want to use at least some more of our money. I want to get some quality backups on this roster as well as I want to see if any where players end up landing. I did not show you guys in the last episode. So here we go around the league through the first few weeks of free HZ. Rodriguez going to the Tennessee Titans. Greg New Newson going to the 49ers. Gilmore going to the Colts. So our Divisional rivals are definitely getting better. Gabe Davis going to Detroit. Yeah, our divisional rivals are definitely getting better. Um, Dexter Perry going to the Dallas Cowboys on a three-year contract. Not really seeing any of our players. Um, gonna try to, uh, I think a lot of our players were in the low 70s. Um, if I'm gonna look at my list here, I wrote down three players' names. So let's see, let's check out here at safety here with Larry Young, he has no offers just yet. What about um, John Dawson? He's going to Green Bay on a one-year deal. And then Troy Agnew, he has signed a one-year deal with the Atlanta Falcons. So, you know, now we can make some more moves. If there's any moves that I want to be made, I'm going to use this time to do so. So I will be going after three players here on a couple-year deals. So we have Travis Williams here. Um who is a solid tight end option. I actually really liked him a few years ago. He was drafted by the Colts. He's going to be hopefully our number two tight end. Uh, Charlie uh, Grainyard here, who was actually the starting quarterback for a few seasons for the um, Minnesota Vikings and then really kind of fallen off. And then we're trying to bring back Devin Bush to be quality depth. And these will be the last few free agents that we target. And we did bring in Charlie. So we do now have a solid backup quarterback. I'm going to continue to evaluate these options. We brought back Devin Bush. And then for Travis Williams, he has yet to make a decision. We'll see if he comes in. Let's get into the NFL draft, though. We do have a fifth-year option here for Gabriel Farrell, our starting tight end. Absolutely just going to pick this up. Just not going to really go into next year, having to try to figure out a contract negotiation with a starting caliber tight end um, for us. And... Once we get to the draft, we'll look at the roster and see really any spots that we need to get younger in. Um, we're a relatively good roster. Um, you know, so like if we sit here and really think about this, there's not like a spot on the team that we're sitting here and trying to get a 
future starter or anything. Like wide receiver is on my short list. Kind of if, if Williams doesn't come over, we'll think about tight end. Um, you know, we don't have to think about running back. Offensive line is set defensively. You know, defensive tackle, maybe. Um, corner, we're kind of good. Yeah, I mean, there's not really like a, a veteran that we have to go out there and replace. Um, you know, Kevin Ridley might replace Justin Cannon um, next year. So, I mean, yeah, th our first round pick, we might even just trade out of it. Um, so, who knows right now? Here we go. The NFL Draft 2000 or 2030. Jesus. 2030. That's the right way to pronounce that. Okay, we have the 25th overall pick. What do we really want to do with this selection once we kind of get there? We didn't bring in um, Williams, so, you know, overall wise, tight end is still, I guess, kind of an option. Like I said, receiver is an option. There just isn't a player. Now, I guess the best way to look at this is who are our potential free agents and kind of go about it this way. So, I mean, Jalen Petrie, we're not looking to replace him. I think he can continue to play at a high level. Steven Dalton, I mean, I guess edge rusher is a positional spot, but Dalton is coming off of his best season and he is a very good power rusher. And, you know, I don't think that I'm going to look to replace him anytime soon. Um, Tunsil, we have his replacement. We have the future backup linebacker. I mean, in reality, is if there's like a young superstar potential player in this draft class that I see, um, we can try to trade up. But I'm not going to trade up here with the um, Jags. I just, you know, divisional rivals. I mean, Jason, Jason um, Jed here. A man, A zone, B press. Probably, yeah, he's the elite talent in this draft. I mean, if he falls out of the first overall pick, um, then we'll go up and go get him. But I, I just don't see that happening. Um, let's do this draft class like we normally do. We'll just slowly sim here. So Jason Jett does go here. So Jacksonville gets themselves a solid corner. I mean, the thing is, is this, guys. As much as I think he is probably the best player in this draft class, and he most likely is, I'm not going to go up and go get someone that um, from a divisional rival. And it also wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for um, the Jacks to even want to trade out. And even if we weren't divisional rivals. So, so now we're getting out of the top 10. I mean, is there re in reality a player that we want to go get? I mean, there's a quarterback if we wanted to go get a quarterback. There's a few good linemen here. Um, you know, I'm again, I'm not thinking about a quarterback and quarterbacks are really the there's two very good ones at the top of the board right now a few good interesting running backs here um you know we could go after like morgan hensley here you know he looks like a very intriguing prospect with as a deep threat um he's electric speed um so morgan i mean he could be an option here but again i'm just not looking to go get a quarterback um Dylan Pelton here, who I did look into. Um, he's a good run blocker. He's a vertical threat, fast. Daniel here, he could be a solid option here, but again, not looking to trade up. Um, was How's that receiver? Deshaun Sneed here. He was the receiver I was kind of keying in on here. Good speed. He's a little smaller. Could play in the slot potentially for us but again i think we kind of sit back and hold pat here the other player that i was taking a look at is marcus leva um here 22 years old he looks like a good um yeah he, he would probably be the player that i draft here in the first round if he falls to us of course but yeah probably not going to trade up here you know if jet was a um if jacksonville did not hold the first overall pick then yeah, I, I most likely wouldn't. Uh, I would have tried to trade up and go get him. Um, we do have the capital if we wanted to go get someone. 
as the Patriots just draft a linebacker here. You know, I, again, just not thinking about moving up here. I just don't see really the purpose. I, I mean, I think getting another first round pick this year, if we wanted to, we could, but um, again, I just, you know, we have our talent. We have two years left in this. And we might as well get the players that can really solidify us. So here in the first round with a 25th overall pick, what do we do? The two quarterbacks are, st or one of the two quarterbacks is still, actually both of them are still available. So I guess they're gonna fall out of the first round. Um, again, not thinking about a running back. This is a spot that I would consider drafting, you know, a receiver, you know, either Morgan or Deshaun, you know, absolutely. Now, what about Hughes here? 21 years old, not really the best in anything. So Hughes is not on the list. So receiver is definitely an option. The tight end is still there if we wanted him. Don't need an offensive lineman. Um, you know, we could try to get a steal here at the linebacker or the defensive line. I mean, again, Marcus here, he is probably my favorite player. Now you do have Virgil Allen here who could be better. I don't know, 23 years old, stronger. Allen is stronger. I mean, I guess the immediate question is, do you care more about the strength or the speed? What do you care more about? He also has D tackle. What's his tackle, A? I actually think Allen might be the better player out of the two of them. So I think if we want to just get a defensive tackle, Allen's the pick, and I think we're going to make him the selection here in the first round. So with the 25th overall pick, Virgil Allen is the selection. And he comes in with 93 strength, 72 speed, 80 acceleration, hidden development. And hopefully he will be that good young defensive tackle on this roster. Well, let's now... Um, let's finish out the first round here. So we have, you know, a couple more defensive tackles going back to back. Surprised that LA decided to draft a running back. I feel like they have good backs on their team. A um, couple guards go. The New York Football Giants. Who do you select? Another guard. So offensive linemen. These quarterbacks are falling out of the first round. Surprise, surprise. And we finish off here with the first round with a running back. So let's now sim to our selection here. We got a defensive tackle. He should be helping out the team immediately. Levi is there if we wanted to go get him. Um, Bart um, Bradley, he's these those stereotypical good off-ball linebackers that you can find. Um, you know, there's only a couple more first-round projected players. Not really thinking about a running back. Receiver, if we wanted to take a flyer on a receiver, Brandy Boone here. You know, with the, that B catching, B release, 6-4. Not the fastest, but Boone could be. Could be a solid option here at wide receiver. Um, and give him a couple years to develop here. We could draft a tight end if we wanted to. Um, I think it's, again, kind of going best player available. Um, and who do you think that is, really? And honestly, I kind of like the Boone selection. Um, just get a good receiver on this roster that can be, we can rotate guys in. And I think we're going to go with Randy Boone here. He's a six foot four, 21 years old. And let's see if he comes in 90 speed. That's good enough for me with hidden development here. Randy, my goodness, can you go get the ball? That's the only thing I care about. As I have one more selection to be made here in this draft class and then I'm going to kind of let the CPU just take over here. They have four picks to be made here. I mean, Bart is there. If you want to just say, I, I think Bart is the safe pick if there's no one else that I want to draft. Um, tight end. Okay, the tight ends are gone, so not thinking about that. Offensive line, not thinking about that. Um, if there is the, if there's any I, there's always an interesting defensive tackle if you really wanted to go in that direction. Um, Marcus C right here. A zone coverage, 21 years old. Elite speed. Okay, I mean, if we're drafting a linebacker, he might be, in terms of an athletic profile, 
Martin Seawright, okay. Um, definitely, definitely intriguing by him. So I think here in the third round, we're going to go with Seawright here. 5'11", 21 years old out of Washington State. Welcome to the Houston Texans. 90 speed, 91 acceleration, also coming out with hidden development. And those will be my three selections for this draft class. And we'll let the CPU, the GM, take over and hopefully he gets us a couple good players. Okay, let's go do a draft recap. We got, you know, three quality backups on this roster. You know, Allen here, 74 overall, hidden dev, coming out with fantastic power moves off the, st off the charts, actually. 80 power moves. Randy Moore came down as a 69 overall, nice, but he needs a little bit of work, raw talent. Um, I think he will be a good receiver on this roster. Nothing to write home about. See right here, hidden devs, very fast. Good zone covers, starting off with 70, 70 zone, very good. And then our CPU, our GM got us a safety, another tight end, a defensive tackle, and a linebacker. So. Got some quality depth across the board. Not a terrible draft class, not the worst. And Jason Jed here, absolutely. Hidden Dev, 82 overall. Should have we gone up and go get him? I guess so, but, um, you know, again, I'm not looking to trade up with my divisional rivals here. Um, did we make the right move in terms of not drafting that defensive tackle? Um, that's one spot that I would like to know. Um, if I can find his name. Marcus Levi, 22 years old, normal dev. So we did get the better defensive tackle, though he does have better power moves and better block shed to start off with. But the hidden dev is always nice. I don't know when the receiver, so... Um, Morgan here, 68 or 76 overall. Yeah, very good. Very much of a deep threat. Would have been a fantastic player to add to the roster. And I don't remember the other name of the receiver that I was looking for. Sean Sneed here. 76, normal development. Same thing. Um, the other receiver was better. That's okay. Let's see any um, who if there's any other high overall players. Nope. So this draft class was you draft Jed and that's it. Tampa Bay got the second best player in the second round. I guess we could have drafted, you know, one of these 78s, but or 76, excuse me, but that's okay. We got the players we needed. Let's get into year number nine. And as we're entering now into year number nine, this will be the roster. We have Mason Pryor at quarterback, Nico Collins, Damian Pierce, Paul Wilkerson, our big three still here. D'Angelo Washington, I'm gonna give him the first few weeks of the season. I will get James Palmer as well as Randy Booth some action here at the third receiver spot. George Howard will be playing receiver back for us. So we're going to have a duo here at running back. Same starting five offensive line, but Ryan Paul, second year tackle, will become the new starter. Uh, we did bring in Trey McBride. He is back on the roster. And then defensively, we will start Allen here in the base defense, though. Um, once we go to our um, nickel package, Dion will move to defensive tackle here. Um, we're going to be giving all these guys an opportunity here. So... You know, hopefully, as we now enter into year nine, we can get back to the postseason. We can not just make a good postseason run. We can make a Super Bowl run. So through the first five games of the season, we're sitting here at one and four. Not the start you want to have if you're, if, if, you know, with a Super Bowl contention and a Super Bowl in mind. This is not what you want. You know, this is this is getting bad and this is getting bad quickly. Um, as you know, we started off the season hot. I know we got a victory and then we have dropped close quarter games here versus Dallas, the Titans, the Giants, and now the Philadelphia Eagles. Now we have the Colts here. And you know, you, you don't want to start off one. I mean, you don't want to start off one and four, but you also don't want to start off one and five. And you, you're kind of putting this season then in the, 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 the back burner, basically, at that moment in time. I mean, what is not working for our team when you think about it? You know, Mason Pryor, is it his fault? No, he's looking good out there. Is it a running game? No, Davian Pierce, I know he kind of is in the top 10. Nico Collins is popping off here. 
D'Angelo's looking solid. You know, offensively, we're looking good. Um, the line isn't playing too, too bad. Defensively, is it this side of the ball? Dwight Bianza with six sacks. I mean, we're not getting pressure from anyone else, but I mean, we're making plays here, so that's good. Got a couple interceptions by our two linebackers, so I don't really know what's up with this team. We have a good roster here, and I, and I kind of am surprised about that, um, you know, and now we're got to make some decisions here. Who do we want for the last few years of this rebuild? Of course, we have only $40 million to work with. And that means that some of these players will not be coming back. So, you know, of course, Jalen Petrie and Steven Dalton are two players I want to keep. Um, Tunsil, he's basically, he's going to stay on this roster until he retires. Justin Can is the interesting one because he is a hybrid type of linebacker on this team as I've developed him to become so, you know. At 6'2", he has fantastic speed. You know, his power, his power, both his power rushing and his finesse rushing are almost in the 70s. You know, he could play anywhere in the front seven almost. So, you know, do we keep those three players? And that's probably the direction I would go. James Palmer, who knows? And everyone else on this back end here, I don't really know what we're going to be doing here. So, um, though, we will be keeping both Jalen Petrie um, as well as, um, what's his name? Um, Steven Dalton. So I will offer... Jalen this two-year deal he does extend and then for Stephen Dalton just I don't want to go into this up and coming this up and coming offseason thinking about an edge rusher so he does resign this is almost becoming a spot right now where we probably won't be able to keep Justin Cannon with 19 million dollars and if we want to make any sort of move you know this roster might we might have to trade away both James Palmer and Justin Cannon. Those are probably our two, and um, and Terrence here. Those are probably like the two or three. Um, I guess Nova or Oliver here would have a little bit of interest in being traded. We might be making a couple of trades here during the deadline. Well, we've made it now to the trade deadline here, and we're sitting here at two and five, and the. Four players that I'm considering moving off of, can we afford to move off of? So, you know, let's start off with each one of them. So for Nova here, who we would probably get like a fourth round pick for potentially, um, or excuse me, Roman Oliver here, um, you know, could get a draft pick for him. Same thing here with um, James Palmer. Both these two guys are young star dev players deserving an opportunity somewhere else. We can't afford to move off of them. Um, Terrence, he's just not going to come back. Um, we drafted Allen, basically his replacement. And then for Justin Cannon here, you know, we did draft Kevin Ridley here. And Kevin can immediately start. He is star dev. Um, he has less speed, less tackling ability. More of an injury also concern too. But... You know, at, you know, we don't, you know, we also did draft Marcus here or Marlon C. Right. So I think we can afford to trade away those four players. So um, I think what we're going to end up doing is trying to package one of the offensive players and one of the defense and try to get as high of a pick as we possibly can. And a deal has been made here with the New Orleans Saints, and I guess I'm kind of lying to you guys. I'm trading both Richard Palmer and Roman Oliver here, the two offensive players here for the to the Saints who did need a backup running back and are desperate for a wide receiver. And Palmer can actually really help them out. And so a second round pick for these two players, I think is very fair for both sides of the ball. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, 100%. So we have one more trade to be made here. And that's now for both Justin Cannon and um, Terrence here. So hopefully we can get some more value for these two players. And another deal has been made here. Now this time with the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle's having a fantastic year, ha projected to have the 31st overall pick. And we're trading both Justin Cannon and Terrence for their 31st overall pick. They needed a linebacker, and they also needed help across the defensive tackle spot. And I think they got two very good quality starters, two players that will help them out immediately. So we're sellers here in year nine. And hopefully as we enter into the finale, 
We can make some moves. Now we have four open roster spots, so I'm going to check out free agency and heck, even maybe the trade um, center. Let's check out the trade center together. You know, you know, when we think about the trade block, you know, if there's like any young guys that like we look at and be like, you know what? We can trade away a fourth round pick and we can get someone to come in here and like really help the team out immediately. Um, that's kind of like where I'm looking at. So Roman Edwards here. He's an X factor. What the heck? Um, I do not have um, regression in terms of um, the, the regression system in terms of the uh, skill set, like uh, star dev to normal and all that. I don't have that. I don't have that on. I just don't think it's a good system. But hey, could get an X factor factor backup on this roster. Emmanuel Thomas here, normal dev defense attack. Would have to pay him, not looking to do something like that. Um, Greg Gresham here, same thing. Would have to pay him. He would be a good player to come in here. Um, I mean, I really think that the best players we just saw um, out in free or out in this trade block. I mean, if we could make a move here with the Washington football team. You know, we have two firsts, two seconds. I mean, I would be willing to give up my third. If they're willing to take this, 100%. So we get Edwards. He's an X-Factor player. Is it more of a development trait that I'm trading for? Yes, but Edwards can at least help out across this defensive line, and we'll find a spot to put him in. Well, with the back half of this season, I have decided to make a couple depth chart changes. So Randy Booth here will give the third receiver spot over D'Angelo. Um, you know, D'Angelo has developed and he's been a good receiver and, you know, it's not his fault at, at all. But, you know, let's give the rookie an opportunity here. He has hidden development. He could potentially be a superstar. Let's give him as much reps as we possibly can. We're also making the move here at defensive at, um, left tackle here. Josh Taylor will now take over for Tunsil. And for the offense, the rest of the offense has relatively stayed the same here. Flip it over to now the defense. Um, I am going to start um, Spain here over Marcus Green in the slot. As well as the player that we just traded for here in Roman Edwards here, who's a speed rusher line, or defensive lineman. I am going to be starting him at this linebacker spot. I just want to give him as much playing time as possible. Um, I don't know if he was like a first round pick for Washington. You know, he had a 10 sack season. No, he was a third round pick. So, I mean, I'm going to give him some opportunities here in the base defense. Um, just to see what he can really do for the defense. You know, I'm looking for tackles for loss or anything like that. You know, he's going to be an interesting player to build or to not even build around, but just to be on this team. Um, but trading away a third round pick for him. Not too bad. Let's go see what happens here for the rest of the season. It could be a lost year for us, and that will make year 10 a make it or break it year for us. And we have made it out to the bye week, and we're six and six. Um, okay. So we're kind of turning things around somehow, some way. No idea how. Remember, this was right around the trade deadline. We got two victories here, made the trades. And then, as you guys can see, we beat the Chiefs, we lost to the Bills, and then we've had back-to-back -back victories here versus divisional rivals. And now versus the Titans and the Jags, you know, these have become two very critical games, as you guys can see. I am not forcing any wins or losses for us. But now in the last stretch here, in the last five games, is there a chance for the playoffs? Potentially. But um, we really need to get over the hump here if we want to do so, you know. It's an important week for us. It's the bye week. Um, in terms of any other negotiation, um, I did bring in Jack Rivers. He was a depth player. Same thing here with Carl uh, Wilkerson. He was a guy that I really liked. In terms of any other negotiations, uh, probably not. Um, you know, all these guys, well, I'm hoping that Tunsil retires. If he doesn't, then I will lowball him or let him just test and just see what he does. But yeah, we have the last what five games let's go see if we can make the postseason well we have done it we have been battling back here 
and we're sitting here with the last two weeks of the season at eight and seven. The Tennessee Titans are nine and six here. Are we in a playoffs? We currently are, yes, sir. We're currently the sixth seed. And is there any chance in the last two weeks if we lose them, if we're gonna be out? Most likely. Um, but we have now a very much of an opportunity here in the AFC to not just win the division, but um, to definitely make the postseason. So whatever decisions we have made here have really helped out the team. So let's send these two weeks with you guys. Let's see if we can make the postseason. Let's go beat the Miami Dolphins here. Come on, Pryor. And Mason Pryor, he did his job here. So now sitting here at nine and seven here, the Tennessee Titans are 10 and six. Um, I don't think we've made the postseason. We have not, but I think we're in a very good spot to do so. The Titans, I believe, have sealed a playoff berth. It's now just all about seeding. So can we either A, win the division, which would be the best case scenario, or B, um, at least make the postseason? I think we have a very good chance to do so. And now can we beat the, um, what's the, the Baltimore Ravens? And we do. We beat the Baltimore Ravens and the Tennessee Titans, I think, lost. But we have officially have made the postseason 10 and 7. We have done it, ladies and gentlemen. We are currently the fifth seed. Don't forget, this year was a losing season. You know, we went into this year and I did not expect us to get back into this playoff hunt. Um, you know, let me go team schedule. You know, I did not expect us. You know, we started off one, two, three, four, five losses, one in five, and we just went on this run here. You know, we won the two, we won the three games during right around the bye week, and then our the trade deadline, and we just kind of continued to stack victories. We won our last three straight. We're a red hot, um, impressive, impressive season for us to get to this moment in time. Of course. Um, let's go through some stats here. Mason Pryor, over 4,000 passing yards, 40 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Obviously, I am not using him, so he is definitely going to throw more touchdowns and interceptions, and you guys can definitely see when I was using him, and then now the last four years of him and his turnovers slowly declining. But 40 touchdowns is a second in terms of his career. In terms of passing yards, no... Okay, so Pryor had a fantastic year. Happy about that. Charlie, he held down the fort. Damian Pierce, 1,700 yards, 17 touchdowns. He's a hammer, and he can get into the and he can get into it. And this is actually since his rookie season, the most rushing yards that he's ever had. My goodness. And he really popped off. He's popped off over the last two years. Uh, George Howard here added four. Um, four and seven here and then Nico Collins got back to a thousand yards 15 touchdowns Paul Wilkerson just a little under a thousand yards but nine touchdowns Caleb Farrell seven and three George Howard added four and one Randy Boone here added 400 receiving yards and six touchdowns D'Angelo added 300 and, um, and two touchdowns so got the receivers involved you know we used everyone as best as we possibly can here um, in terms of the offensive line here, very good season. Ryan Paul let out the most sacks, but that's okay. We started the backup two. We started the young tackles, just because I think that they deserve the development. Christian Harris led us in tackles as always here. What about TFL? David Elliott with 19. Stephen Dalton with eight, and that's not really his strength. Never been his strength. Uh, D'Angelo Dwight. Um. Uh, Dwight. P Pianzo, 15 tackles for Laws. Virgil Allen at 11. In terms of sacks, David Elliott and Pianzo both had 12. And then everyone else had a few. Dion has kind of been a waste. And he might be a player that we move off, move off of just to try to get a pick for. He's never really gotten the opportunity in terms of the edge or at any spot in terms of this defensive line. Could be a player that we move off of, but I see six interceptions for Christian Harris. Derek Stingley gets three more to help out his fantastic career. Let's look at some, and we had the top 
We had a top 10 um, passing off or top 10 offense and a top 13 defense here. Let's look at um, MVP and awards is Joe Burrow, Zach Taylor. Okay, wow. Jonathan Taylor, Greg Rousseau, any Texans, and I'm just not seeing anything. Jet, he won it. Um, let's see if we have any. Is Mason Pryor in this list? He is number seven. Damian Pierce is number four. Wide receiver of the year. Nico Collins is number six. Offensive lineman. We can never win one of those. I do see, though, um, Scott Washington. He was a good trade. Um, best offensive lineman. See David Elliott in there. And Dwight made the top 10 list. Linebacker, no one. Corner of the year. I do not. Or DB of the year. Don't see anyone. Derek Singley, runner up. Um, and that's it. So, you know, overall, we're doing fantastic. But before we enter now into the postseason and start simming, and I kind of go fast because I kind of forget about this. Let's look at some season leaders here. Let's just look around. Let's see if there's like... I mean, we didn't have a quarterback that we moved off of here. So, I mean, in terms of like any quarterbacks that are like impressive or on our end, I don't think that's going to be anyone. So in terms of running backs, I think all the running backs are gone from our league. I'm um, just going to see if there's anyone. I mean, Nick Jennings, he had a thousand yards and 20 touchdowns. I don't think that there's any um running back in terms of receiver let's see we did move off of a couple guys Carl Graham had a 1500 yard season um I always like looking at this stuff I typically do this in the back end just to know what the hell is happening but Hugh Lewis he was on the Colts for a few years if you guys remember him um Nico Collins he's up there as always goodness there's a, a damn um, Gino Duval here, a thousand yard campaign here with the um, San Francisco 49ers. What has he done since leaving? The two years as a Jet, he was solid. I mean, he was a solid receiver for us too. But kind of having that type of season that you wanted to have with us, he signed a two year deal with them. I think we let more receivers go. Um, so let's get back down to Duval. But. You know, I always like looking through this stuff just to see if there's like any like interesting players that we moved off of that um, has had big years. Tyler Milliton, yet again, great year from the Saints. We should look at the Saints just because we did trade away um, what whatever the heck his name was, uh, Palmer to them. Um, but there's a lot of, of course, there's a lot of receivers making an impact. I don't know where everyone is. Um, but let's look at the Saints real quick. Um, so they had three 1,000 yard receivers and James Palmer was not really included into one of them. Their top three guys, I guess, stayed. But let's see Tyler here real quick. 78 overall, his few years. He only played one year as a Jet. And then, you know, he's been a role player for those two years. And then he finally had the season that I thought he could have. You know, he was a depth player for a few years and he's really showing out what he can be so good for him i think we traded away um they did not decide to run the football at all with a backup back but oliver probably is solid let's look at seattle real quick just because we did trade away two defensive players to them so let's see justin cannon solid season and then where is you so three sacks yeah okay so, so far, you know, at least the players are starting and they're looking good um, and their respected teams. I don't know where everyone else landed, but now let's get into the postseason. So Tennessee Titans, we know this team extremely well. We've had a ton of fun battles against them, and I am going to let the CPU handle all of these upgrades. Um, but ton of battles with this team. Let's try to get to the divisional round. And if we can, I mean, there's a good chance. And we do. We beat the Tennessee Titans finally. We did. We split the series in the regular season. And now we got back into the divisional round, which we got kicked out here, I believe, by the Kansas City Chiefs again last year. And we've had, again, a ton of battles versus this Chiefs team. 11-6 and six here. Can we get to the AFC Championship game? And we can. 
we are now one game away here and now we're playing against the new york jets a jets team that i don't really remember but a jets team that we did rebuild that was our last big franchise so can we get to the super bowl here here in year nine a season that i did not expect us to be in this position here and we lost we lost 28 to 14 we were a game away whatever you want to say here the new york jets are the seventh seed the two seventh seeds have made it to the super bowl as new orleans saints so the two players that we traded to them but let's see over here so joe austin here their quarterback i don't know where their other guy they drafted in but he threw three touchdowns damian pierce tried to lead the way here but they did their job luke ward i still remember that name um a few sacks allowed on our end but disappointing but we got to the afc championship game we know we can get there that's the thing we know we can get there and we know we can get back um if we look at the quick pro bowl roster um no quarterback no running back i am very surprised of actually about that um fullback no wide receiver nico collins was number six um got the guard of the year two our two guards made it pianzo made it elliot made it um and they're they those two guys have been carrying for our defensive line for us for the last few years so you know not a ton of not a ton of pro bowlers but let's get to the super bowl and let's go see who can win the super bowl and this year's Super Bowl champions are the New Orleans Saints beating the New York Jets 27 to 19. As you guys can see, Ben Daniels is the MVP as we did trade away our two, I think our two offensive players to them to get um, their second round pick. So we will have a late second round pick, but the New Orleans Saints are the new champions of the league. And now we are going to be entering into another offseason, the last offseason of the rebuild. Um, all these guys are practice squad players, so we will um, auto upgrade all of them. But we're entering into the last year. The finale episode will be next time. Um, you know, we'll go through another offseason. We will go through another um We'll go through a whole nother season. We'll see what we can accomplish here. No development traits. We see that Randy Booth here was our rookie receiver. He did turn out to be a star dev guy. You know, he can make some plays down the field if necessary. He's not a burner, but he can make some plays, um, you know. And as we're entering now into the last off season here, we gotta be thinking, um, David Elliott has gone up to superstar dev. That's fantastic. You know, what do we want to, though, accomplish here? And that's, like, question number one. I think that's what we have to sit here and consider is, do we want to go all... How much of all-in do I mean by going all-in here? You know, we're probably not going to go into this offseason with a ton of money. You know, when, when you think about it, you know, we do have players we can move off of here, you know? If you think about it like this. You know, nothing here at the safety position here, but we could move off of Marcus Green here. Green, not a big player to keep on this roster. He's a solid man, cover corner, but we could get a draft pick or we could get a good player for him. Um, you know, we have our top two corners. Um, you know, we potentially have our three linebackers here, but, you know, do you sit here and say this to yourself? Let's move off of um, either Roman Edwards or um, Dion Wilbury and try to get a draft pick or something for either one of them and i think that is very much in the play so and same thing here with kevin ridley here because i think we can enter into this season with um see right as that third linebacker and go with both christian harris and nova at their respected spots um so those are two spots that could potentially be changed here you know in terms of offensive linemen that we could consider moving off of of course, Hitchcock here, who's been a career backup. We could consider him. Um, same here with Ben Powers. I have no idea if Tunsil will decide to retire or not. He's 37 years old, and he's still kicking it. Um, but, you know, right here, right now, I think as we're entering into the last offseason of this team, let's go see how much money we're going to have.
So currently we have $35 million to work with here. Tunsil is still kicking it, so I will try to give him another contract here. And he is probably the only one out of all these players that I will decide. Um, though I am not going to give him a one-year $8 million. No, as a courtesy, I will try to keep him on a one-year like $5 million type of deal. But we have okay money. Not terrible amount, you know. Not a lot, but we do have the players to consider trading. We do also have the draft capital now. We have two first, two seconds, and we have these four picks that are in the later end of the draft. So maybe we sit here and look at, you know, the NFL and say this to ourselves. What are what player are we away from? You know, do we want to go after a guy like a Von Temple? who could immediately make an impact. And these guys are all the 99 overalls in this league. But do we want to go after, you know, hello, another wide receiver, bring in a third receiver here and say, hey, you know what? We have both Paul Wilkerson and Nico Collins, but maybe we want a guy like a KC Hill or we go after a guy like a Carl Graham or, um, you know, a John Pounds here who has broken out into a fantastic receiver. Or do we want to go after, you know, you know get a top tier defensive lineman again and you know really maybe try to bring back Nick Bosa you know who the heck knows I think that would be ridiculous if we could get him but you know bring him back to the team um but you know who knows what we will end up doing here but guys please leave a like comment down below what you thought of today's action next episode will be the series finale I have never done these this five years these five type of episodes let me know down below give me any sort of feedback if you guys liked these five type of episodes you know it's different you know it's not me just ending it off a super bowl or ending it off of an a afc lost championship game give me any sort of feedback if you guys like madden franchise content this is one of the gr i greatly appreciate if you guys would drop a sub here Again, there will be, and once we finish up here with the Texans, I will be moving strictly to rebuilding all 32 teams, and that will be my next project for the next few months. I am still deciding on what's the next major rebuild on this channel. Kind of once all the bugs and everything is figured out, then I will pick a team and have the correct slider set and everything. So guys, again, leave a like, comment down below what you thought, give me any sort of feedback, and don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you in the Houston Texans series finale.